video, I will be showing you how you can send authenticated messages or documents through the internet using the digital signature technology. Imagine that you are a general. You want to send an important order to your troops to launch a missile targeted at a certain coordinate. But while the message is traveling to the troops, an enemy might be able to hack into and change the coordinates of the target. If the troops receive that edited message, terrible consequences will happen. With digital signatures, if the message was to be hacked into by an enemy, the troops will know. First, let's have a look at how our Python program works. We have this file which contains a, an order we want to send to our troops. So launch the missile targeted at these coordinates. First, we will run this program. They ask us to input the value of p. p must equal to a prime number, and q must be a prime number that does not equal to p. So let's say 79. Here you can see they generated this package for us. Let's see what's inside the package. This is the file which contains the order we want to send our troops. Here we have the encrypted hash value of this file. And here we have the public key. Now, we can simply take this package, I will cut it, and send it to the troops. Now the troops can run this program. Here they get true. True means that the file in here is authentic. It has not been hacked into and changed. But what if an enemy wants to change the coordinates a little so that this will be targeted at our own, mis our own troops? Now, if we run this again, we get false. So, so that means the order is not authentic. This public key here it's the key important thing we are, we are sending them. To be more secure, we can send them these numbers through the telephone, through phone, or if there is time, even through mail. We can even encrypt this file here using a private key and sending them a public key to decrypt it for more security. And in my previous videos, we learned how we can do that. Now, let me first delete this. This time, let's change this file a bit. Let's say we want to launch it over here this time. And this time, we choose different prime numbers for P and Q. Oops. Now we get this package, and let's have a look at this public key. Here you see we get something different. Now, let's say I change this a little. Instead of a 9, I change this to a 1. And then I send it to the troops. The troops get false, so that one has been altered. Let me just change it back from this 1 to a 9. Now we get true, so this is the authentic file. Digital signatures are crucial not only when a general wants to send orders to his troops. Imagine that an eyewitness has a lot of information about a case. He wants to send that information to the judge, but he can only do it through the internet. And the internet is obviously not safe, so anybody, anybody can alter what he has. So he can implement his digital signature 
inside the information, then send it to the judge. So if the information has been altered, the judge will know that it is not authentic. Finally, when the when sec the Secret Service are on a mission and they are a long distance from each other's, they want to send information to each other's. They use digital signatures so that when their information has been altered, they will know not to use it. Before we jump into how we can create these Python programs, let's first have a look at how we can create our digital signature. Here we have instructions for the sender. We get the hash value of our document. The hash value of a document will consist of these characters from 0 to 9 and from A to F. We will get a long string of those mixed up. That will be like the ID of our document. So, every document or message will have a different hash value or 99.99% .99 of the time will be different. There might be two that are the same, but that's highly unlikely. So let me just show you. First I import hashlib and I print hashlib.sha256 in here, I pass in a byte. In these quotes, I can have my message, let's say hello. And then I simply add dot hex digest. And I run it. Here we get the hash value for hello. Now, if I quickly run that again, we get the exact same hash value, but if I change this a little bit, now it's Kello, we get a complete different hash value. So it's like for every document and message, we get a different ID. After we get the hash value of our document, we convert it from hexadecimal to decimal. The reason I want to do this is because, as you can see, in hexadecimals, we have these characters A to F, but we want to use the RSA method to encrypt the hash value. We don't have to use the RSA, but right now I am. So here you can see 0 to 9 from hexadecimal to decimal is the same. But for every A, we get a 10, for B, we get 11, and for F, we get a 15. Here's how we can convert it. Let's imagine that the hash value we get is 1A to B. Of course, it should be really long, but this is just for demonstration. We take the first character, 1, we times 16 to the third power. The 16 comes from the fact that this is a 16 digit. This 3 comes from the, the amount of characters in our hexadecimal subtracted by 1. And the next one will be the second character, A, which you can see is 10 times 16. Here we have 3 minus 1, so it's 2. You can see the pattern. First it's 16 cubic, then each time we subtract 1. And for each of those, it's the characters. So B is 11. We find the answer. It's 6,699. So we use the RSA method to encrypt the hash value with our private key. We learned how to generate our private and public key previously. Finally, we send the encrypted hash value and public key with the document. Now here are the receiver's instructions to see whether or not our document is authentic. We find the hash value of the document again. Using the RSA method, we decrypt the hash value with the public key. 
So we already sent them the public key. We convert the hash value, the one we decrypted, from decimal to hexadecimal. So here we have this decimal we got previously. To convert it back to a hexadecimal, we divide it by 16, since you can see it's a 16 digit. We get the remainder of the result, and we store it somewhere. Then we take this part and divide it by 16. We get a remainder of 2. We take this part, divide by 16. We get a remainder of 10. And here you can see we get a remainder of 1. We take this one, we put it here. Here we have 10, 2, and 11. Our hexadecimal is 1a, since 10 equals to a, 2b. Finally, we check if the hash value is equal to the ha other hash value. So if the hash value we get is equal to the one that was sent to them, the document isn't changed, so it's authentic. But if they do not match, it might have been changed by a hacker. This is the end of this tutorial. Tomorrow, I will go into detail into how we can create that Python program you just saw. Today is February 19th, 2020. Please subscribe to my channel. It's called NetsEDU. Thank you for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day.